Hey guys, Lighthouse here. Hey, want to do a quick video on my Mountain Laurel Designs Cricut Tarp and Internet, both in the DCF versions. So, for those that may be new to the channel, I just finished up my 156 day Appalachian Trail through hike. And I've probably got well over 100 nights uh, underneath this shelter. So, I've got, I think, a fairly decent handle on at least what I like and dislike about it. So, hopefully it'll be of some use to anybody thinking about purchasing this. Because, uh, yeah, when I was doing some research, I was having a hard time finding information on it from people that actually owned it. I mean, there's a couple of YouTube videos, but it's more or less people that just received it in the mail and set it up in their backyard, more or less. So, anyways, a couple of things I wanted to mention real quick it might save you some watch time. <laughs> so, first off, uh, if you're planning on staying at established campsites the majority of the time, for instance, on the Appalachian Trail, if you plan on staying at the shelter locations, you know, in one of those tent spots, uh, this shelter system, well, there may be better options, I guess is what I'm trying to say for you. This, the strength of this shelter is its small footprint. I mostly stealth camp at night, you know, find basically find a spot in the woods and, and set up there. Uh, so, like I say, it has a really small footprint, so it works really, really good for that. Uh, secondly, if you're in and out of your shelter a lot at night, for instance, if you have to get up and pee every 15 minutes, <laughs> uh, you may not enjoy this shelter, uh, because basically you have to crawl in and out of it. It doesn't bother me, uh, because basically I get in at night and stay there till morning, uh, more or less. And the third thing is, if you're on a fairly tight budget, it uh, might not be a good fit because, I mean, Mountain Laurel Designs makes really nice quality items, uh, but you do pay for it. So, Just wanted to mention those few things. Uh, just might save you some watch time <laughs> by figuring out early on this shelter may not be for you. So, Anyways, uh, bottom line is, yeah, it held up really good for me. I wanted to mention that. I think it's Definitely got another through hike in it without any issue. Uh, stood up really well in all weather conditions. I mean, I had some freezing rain, uh, high winds, and so forth. No issues there. I didn't really have much snow. I mean, there's a few flurries a couple nights, but really nothing major. Anyways, uh, let's get this thing set up and uh, take a look at it. Sorry, guys, I forgot to mention. I'm not going to give weights, dimensions, and pricing in this video. Uh, that's all available right on Mountain Laurel Designs website. Uh, go over there to get the most up-to-date, accurate information. Uh, I mean, some of that stuff can change fairly regular, especially pricing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, possibly weights and stuff as well if they make modifications. So, anyways, uh, here we go. Okay, so we're going to be showing a few different things here. I just want to go through real quick. Uh, first, we've got a couple trekking poles. Most any trekking pole will do. Uh, got a couple uh, Tyvek ground sheets these I just got from a construction site these ones are pretty gnarly they've, <laughs> they've been on an Appalachian Trail through hike so uh, time for them to be replaced but in either case uh, we got some stakes and I've got a little stuff sack here that I keep the tarp and the internet in I like putting it in here uh, it gives a little bit of protection when it's inside your pack might save it from getting a you know whole poke through it or whatever and also if your tarp is wet or has a bunch of pine needles or whatever on it. Just helps keep you inside of your pack a little bit cleaner. So we'll be talking about the Mountain Laurel Designs Cricket Tarp, which is in the DCF version. I, I got it in camo. And also the Mountain Laurel Designs Internet, which has the DCF bathtub floor and so forth. Uh, we'll, we won't be putting that in the first setup We'll do it afterwards. Uh, I just want to show the tarp by itself at first. Okay, so the first thing I would do when I get to camp, and, and you don't need to do this, but I take my, one of my ground sheets, and I lay this down first. I know a lot of people put them in after they get their tent set up or, what, or tarp set up, whatever. But I like putting it down first simply because this way I could lay down on it and make sure the spot is comfortable right so you're not uh, laying on a root or something 
if you feel something under there, it's really easy right now to move it a little bit. This is where your bathtub floor is going to go, or where you're going to lay, basically. So put that down. You can adjust it if you need to. See which side's more comfortable, whether it's that way or this way. Like here, I'm, I feel like my head's down, so I'd want to have my head up this way. Just nice to know uh, when you get ready to put your pad in there and so forth. Okay, I had to move a little bit because of the sun, but in either case, uh, first thing you want to do to get this thing set up is find the front of the tarp, which has this Mountain Laurel Designs label on it. Uh, and there's where your trekking pole is going up on the inside. There's a little cup there, kind of. So we're going to lay that down. We're going to have the front facing the camera. Obviously, when you actually set it up, you'll want the front facing away from the wind if you're worried about a little bit of rain possibility of rain that evening. So we're going to drive in the back two corners first. Those are mini groundhog stakes. Uh, those seem to work pretty good. I mean, use whatever you got. I do use a little bit bigger one on the main guy line coming out. So this one here will be a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger stake, heavier duty. Sorry about the traffic noise. Trying to get that set in there a little bit. We can readjust that pole, uh, trekking pole uh, if need be. But we're going to get it close anyways. Drive this one in. And then do the front two corners. Get it fairly taut. Hit a rock there, obviously. There we go. And then the back. There's one right in the middle. And hitting rocks here. Let's see what we can get. There we go. And then the two ends. There's one in the middle again, right on each side. Probably don't really need to get this for. This exercise, but we'll put them in. There's also one in the middle of the back, which you can uh, tie out if you are worried about quite a bit of wind. So at this point, we're going to take our other trekking pole. There's a little grommet here on the front. I'm just going to put that trekking pole handle down and push up on that until it's taut and then lock your trekking pole and it's all set up good to go obviously got to adjust your tie back here a little bit if you need to adjust your pole i mean you don't have to mess with it too much but you can come in here unlock that readjust it however you want you can bring it out further if you want uh whatever and then just lock it back in place well there i got it all set up so uh yeah, say so there's there are spots on each end where you can put additional tie lines if you want with some shock cord. Uh, there is one on the back with some shock cord. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could kind of pull that out a little bit, stake it down, or if it's really windy or whatever, whatever works good. And again, on this end as well, there's an additional one. Now, obviously, you don't have to, but what I would do is put in another piece of tie back right in front. This works good when you're crawling in and out so you don't get mud all over yourself. Also to lay your uh, pack on or, or what have you. So, and for reference, I'm about five foot nine, 175 pounds. So as you can tell, I've got plenty of room in here. Uh, no issue at all. Set up good and so forth. Plenty of headroom. So looking from the inside, uh, you can see you got some hooks here that's for your internet 
this little pouch here is something I added that doesn't come with it I put that on so I could put my headlamp and so forth in there if wanted something else I just wanted to mention uh, if you wanted a little bit extra privacy I did carry an umbrella with me just open up that umbrella uh, provides a little bit of if the winds coming in a little strong or something like that or you just want a little like I say a little bit extra privacy open that umbrella up and put it there in the opening so this DCF tape on both sides uh, that's something I did uh, my fault not the fault of the material or mountain laurel designs I'm going to show you what happened here in a bit okay so there's something called storm mode uh, and as most of you probably know the Appalachian Trail is really really rainy <laughs> and I only had to do this like twice two or three times while on trail so what you do is basically take this pole front pole out reset your line get a loop on this side so basically I got another stake there take that tighten that up loosening up the original one and as you can see the beak has really lowered now for the DCF version you can see you get well both versions I'm sure uh, both the DCF and the still nylon you end up with a lot of extra material now I could take a little bit of that out a little bit of that slack by playing around that pole a little bit maybe playing around the corners but you're always going to end up with a fair amount of extra material from what I've heard I don't know I've never owned one but the still nylon since it is a little bit stretchy if you will you can pretty much get most of that out. Uh, so, like I say, I only had to do this a couple times while on trail. The first time was during some freezing rain in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, it, the wind kind of uh, shifted a little bit, started getting a little bit of water in through there. Not a lot. I probably, in hindsight, didn't really have to mess with this. But I did. Anyways, I stuck the stake in from inside because I didn't want to get out. Uh, obviously, freezing rain. I was all in my dry clothes and everything. So I, I drove that stake in and put the line in. And then I had this extra material. So not having a whole lot to play with. Uh, all I had was oops, a binder clip. <laughs> so I did put uh, an old dirty sock on there first. Took the binder clip and you know kind of whoops took the slack out that way because the wind was blowing and you know didn't want that flapping all night but what happened is the the sock kind of came out of position and that binder clip kind of dug into that material a little bit so i stuck these pieces of dcf tape on afterwards that's all i had uh, to kind of Strengthen that up a little bit so if I ever had to do it again, I didn't have to worry about that digging in quite so much. Uh, in hindsight, what I wish I'd done before I got on trail was places like Z Packs, they sell those little stick on, you know, things and get, get something put on each side with maybe a piece of shock cord. Uh, so if you had to do that, you could, you know, just hook that real quick. I'm sure you could come up with something. Uh, would be a better fix than what I did. But anyways, uh, that's that's what happened with, with those things. I kind of wish uh, Mountain Laurel Designs would do something about that. Uh, you know, give you some option or at least some some thoughts on what could be done. But in either case, it only I had to do that a couple times. Uh, normally, uh, you know, in this position, oops, in this regular position, I never had to worry about rain coming in. Uh, it was really never much of an issue. Uh, as long as you obviously have the, the uh, beak, uh, you know, the opening facing uh, away from the wind. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take this down and put the internet into it. Uh, I could put the internet in while it's up, but I found it's much easier to do it while it's, it's down. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, now you don't have to do this every time, right? So basically, once you get it installed, you just leave it in there. You can uh, take the tarp down. You can take put the tarp back up, uh, store it, how, whatever you want with this installed. You don't have to do this every single time, right? So basically, I, I get the tarp upside down. I'm going to start snapping these snaps into place. 
obviously, <laughs> just pay attention. You want the zipper towards the front of the tarp. Uh, the front of the tarp is right there. So we're gonna put this in real quick. Uh, I always start with the with the uh, top snap, which goes right up to where the trekking pole goes in. So I'm not gonna play the video for this entire process. Uh, it's pretty pretty simple. You got these little clips, so you just basically clip those in. Okay, so I got the urn in that in at the moment. Set this up real quick, and I'll show you what that looks like. So there, like I said, it sets up the same exact way with or without the air in that. So uh, just keep it in and, uh, you know, as long as you want. So anyways, uh, we'll get inside it real quick so we can take a peek. Okay, so we got the internet in this there now. So yeah, again, plenty of room in here. I mean, it's not super spacious inside this internet, but it's all the room you need, uh, or at least I need. Uh, so yeah, anyways, say so you got a couple zippers here, you got the bathtub floor, never had any issues with water, obviously getting in here, uh, or insects with the screening and so forth. So yeah, with this in, I'd usually put my pack on its side, on one end, uh, you know, have a few other things up here. The only thing to be aware of is... Uh, as mentioned, it rains a lot on the Appalachian Trail, so getting packed up in the morning if it's raining out uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. You just have to be methodical about it. I mean, I didn't really have any issues, but, you, you know, <laughs> it's not like a uh, duplex or something like that where you can spread all your crap out inside and have all kinds of room, get packed up and so forth uh, before uh, getting out of your tent. I mean, I, I could get packed up in here. But like I say, you just have to be methodical about it because I mean, you get your sleeping pad, your sleeping bag in here, which you don't want to get wet. So you got to unpack, you know, stuff that may be left in your pack, uh, get that put in, so on and so forth. So, you know, this, this tent or this shelter is for people that put a higher priority on being able to set up in small spaces, uh, stealth camping, what have you over uh, convenience and comfort. So. I don't know if this view is worth anything or not, but you can see you have a lot of room inside this internet. And so basically inside here, I would have obviously my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, uh, a couple of odds and ends of things down there possibly. And then up by my head, I would have my clothes bag, which acted as my pillow. And usually my electronics bag and ditty bag. Pretty much everything else was outside. You can see you have a lot of room underneath this beak. And what I would do typically is keep my pack on its side underneath to make sure it was under cover. And if it started to rain, you can see that Tyvek kind of sticks out quite a ways. So obviously you wouldn't want that to get rained on. But what would work good is if it started raining, I just wrap that up around like that over the top of the pack or whatever else is out here and that would offer quite a bit of splash protection and so forth as well okay a couple of last minute things i just wanted to touch on uh reasons i really like this sh uh, shelter set up number one you're kind of looking at it right you're always open on one side you feel like you're really out in nature uh you know always have a view you're not zippered up inside a tent uh, feeling like you're inside a plastic bag or something like that. Uh, which brings up another reason also, uh, condensation. I never had a condensation issue inside this shelter. Just because you have the airflow going through, you're not all zippered up all the time. The other thing is, uh, the only real flat spot, clear spot, you need in order to set the shelter up is whatever this footprint is of the bathtub floor on this internet. 
So I've set this up before when I didn't have many good options. I had, you know, dead trees running through here underneath the beak. <laughs> I've had stumps before out here, rocks, what have you. The only, like I say, the only flat spot you need is whatever this footprint of this uh, bathtub floor is. Okay, so just one last thing before we wrap this up. It's gone on long enough. But I just wanted to mention that internet, you can set that up by itself. So if you wanted to set it up outside uh, so you could watch the stars and not worry about the bugs getting at you, you can can do that. Uh, you just run a like a ridge line or what have you, connect to that, or you can do it with a couple trekking poles. You can make it work in either case. So anyways, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, hopefully it was of some use to, to you guys. Uh, went through it pretty quick. It's probably kind of a crappy review video, but hey, hopefully there's some decent information in there for you. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later.